Athens. Right, and so this is where we're, we're trying to tie together all these different systems and make athletes understand the nervous system and the hormonal system and... And I don't think, I don't think we're going to do the best job, but I just want, the one takeaway I want everyone to take from this is that it's the, you can't take a reductionist approach to any of this stuff. The systems are all dynamic. They all interact with each other in a way our bodies all self-organize themselves in a way that's optimal for that individual person. So you're, the way you function and the way I function are so incredibly different, but we could both perform a similar task. You know? Right. So you, the way that you your brain controls the motor control for a forehand is going to be totally different than how I do it, but we will know, like what we know about you know the kinematics of throwing is that the, the sequence in which we use to throw it will be the same if we're both good throwers, but our techniques to get there with the individual parts will, could be completely different. Right. It's like you take take someone like Chicken, like Adam Simon, throws totally different than like a Ben Wiggins throws. Right. But if you look at how their hips and shoulders move, and you take you go back to these, these parts that lead up to it, they will both throw with the same sequence of hip to, to torso to... Right. Sure. And finish. With and that. that's and this is all based off of research from um, in in gait analysis and what uh, the Titleist Performance Institute has done with golf, which is very I mean, swinging a club, throwing a ball, kicking a ball, throwing a frisbee, they're all very analogous. Hitting a volleyball, hitting it with a tennis racket. Right. You get all of these um, these motions that are analogous to gait right. and how the hips and shoulders are supposed to rotate and reciprocate. And, and gait is what? Walking? It's walking, locomoting, getting from one foot to the other. And, and it's all sequencing. So, sure. so where in training is there <laughs> the opportunity to not do things in sequence? It, because like a lot of what we've learned as our classic education in this world at the beginning yeah. was based on classic strength conditioning, which was, came from powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, and bodybuilding. Right. in a general sense. And a lot of these are single joint exercises, big bulk, bulk movements like a front squat. And these things don't necessarily require a level of sequencing, but anything in life, in sport, actually on the field, is it's all sequencing. So that's kind of been the evolution into this functional training. And people take it to a whole nother level. Like you right. see some of these people that are only training surf athletes and like everything's on a BOSU ball with a cable it's all like sequencing do we start with a baseline uh, to get strength and when do we sequence out when do we add in the sequences well I think the approach that you and I and Mike Boyle would use and a lot of people who sort of get it um, is one that's neurodevelopmental and sort of follows the the hierarchy of of positions that you get into as you develop. So you, you talk about basic human movements, so we'll say squatting, hinging, uh, bending at the, at the hips, lunging with both legs, being able to be on one leg, reaching uh, or pushing, pulling in multiple planes of motion, and then we'll say uh, locomoting, as we can include those as one of them. So you need to value all those things because that's what the human body is designed to do. And then you use progressions based off of how, at least what, the way we see it, um, you use progressions based off of how the, a child develops from the ground to standing, crawling on the ground, and getting up from a squat, and then being able to step forwards and catch yourself in a game pattern. And then from there, you know, being able to, you're talking about pushing yourself off the ground to get to that squatting position, pulling yourself up on a table or a chair. Like these are all actions that will bring you to standing because as you know human beings we're we're designed to exist to move around and eat and procreate and that's really what we're here for so these are very these are the performance aspects of everybody everyone everyone needs to breathe that's a performance measure everyone needs to, to be able to walk around successfully that's a performance measure and everyone needs to have some sensory perception in order to you know exist in an optimal way Right, and you mentioned crawling in there, and it's been interesting some of these developmental patterns that have come back into strength and conditioning. I remember when Mike, when I say Mike, I mean Mike Boyle, I spent two years working up at Mike, so I was able to see his thought process evolve, and he, I can't remember where he got crawling from. It might have been Charlie, because Charlie was out studying DNS, which is a very developmental model. Right. Uh, am I correct in saying that? I don't know if that's where, it, I'm trying to think of what I got it from. 
it's just like people just started adding crawling. And when Mike started programming crawling on all fours with his clients, I think it's an FMS thing. He was making fun of himself because he's like, man, my clients are like, man, Mike, what are you having us do now? I'm coming into the gym to get a training session. You have me on all fours crawling, but then crawl like it made sense because you have to use your core, you have to be on all fours, and then crawling segmented or segued into rolling where we're actually going to take a kettlebell overhead and roll and work on sequencing you know from being on the ground to rolling over yeah and at first i was like what do these people do like why does that matter and then when i like try to do it myself with the right cues it's like wow like i'm not very good at, like dissociating like my upper body from like my lower body and it just goes way back to the roots of, like you say, who we are as humans yeah. and how we develop in this. Well, we could start, I mean, I, so in, it's like the three, I'll start with like a three month position, which is laying on your back. So if anyone knows what a dead bug gig is, you're in a base position of three months. And that's where baby learns to cross their body and touch their feet and they figure out all these things that exist on them. They start like hitting themselves in the head and they figure out that their head's there. And then they, they get they develop these muscles and so they start grabbing the ground to figure out where that is. They get reference there. They start to be able to roll over. They get to their side, which is what you're talking about with the kettlebell, uh, doing an arm bar. And then I get to my belly and then I end up pushing myself off the ground. So I get my, my scapulas, stabilizers and everything start working. My core starts working the proper way. I'm able to like have the muscles to right my head and keep myself in a good position. Then I come up to a crawling position. I might like army crawl first and then I go on my knees and move my butt around a little bit and then I get to something and try to reach it. I try to reach that and then I grab a, I find a table or a tree and I, I grab onto it and I get up off the ground and I'm standing but I don't have any developed muscles to be able to get to walking and then I sort of let go and I start trying to walk and it looks terrible and I fall down and I squat myself back up and then I try to walk again and then eventually I get that pattern down and then from there you, you move in all different planes of motion to, to be very task driven, right. grabbing things and off the ground in different angles and always breathing. I mean, that's, that's number one. Right. And there's value to all of this. And just within the realm of strength conditioning, I shouldn't say realm of strength conditioning. I said just performance, just as, performance. A human, as a human being. Yeah. But we've seen in the industry, things pop up like MoveNet, who specializes in just this, you go to a MoveNet certification, and you're going to be walking on a tightrope. You're going to be, well, not necessarily a tightrope, but that you're always well, walking just, yeah. on narrow stuff. Right. You're climbing trees. You're climbing ropes. You're doing all these hands on the ground, crawling style patterns. And what we're trying to do with just with functional performance training as a general term is snag from all these things and bring it in to what works for this athlete or for this person. Yeah. And, and like you said, there's the the mental side of things, the hormonal, the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, all these things, and we're trying to tie it together. And that's why in this show, it's going to be interesting when people watch this because they're going to be like, because huh? I mean, we're going in lots of different directions, but that's, we're always trying to take this complicated stuff and bring it, you know. Yeah, yeah, you make it digestible so you don't. Because we get to sit here and talk until we're blue in the face about this to somebody, and they might not. Like care. we have the past yeah. three days, right? Just like they have, back and forth you and, I, you and I care at least about this, right? It's an, it would be interesting to see what people in the subway think about. What well, we, we about. care because like performance is important to right. us. Right. I, I, so I, I'm digressing. So the reason I say this is because if I were to say a bunch of this stuff to one of my clients or athletes, <laughs> they would be like, "I don't care about any of this." But if they were to ask me a question about something, I would answer them. Most of the time, what I'm trying to do, or what you are trying to do, is we're going to ask like provocative questions that are going to lead people to where we want them to go, right. and not necessarily like regurgitate all this information just for the sake of it. Because as you and I both know, no one really cares how much you know right. until they know how much you care right. about them and what you're, they're trying to do.